Yeah. Body count shouldn't matter. What's your body count? I know it's definitely over like 50, probably over 90. It's about 200, including men and women. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, new study, ugly women cheat more than the average ones. I think this is kind of interesting. I've always had a feeling that it was kind of the mid or low below average girls that did the most sleeping around. And part of the reason why is because women need attention and they like attention, especially from men. And this usually starts when in, in high school, when all the young men are busy paying attention to women and getting very excited to talk to women. And women say, I like this attention, but I'm not pretty. All the pretty girls get the attention. And then suddenly they discover their secret weapon and they reach into their pocket and they pull out the pink taco. And I, as soon as they do that, all the boys look over and they say, hey, free pink taco. It's free pink taco day today in high school or college. And all of a sudden the ladies get some attention. I've always felt like this, but I never really had any proof to it until now. There's a new study out uh, and there's a new survey out. So there's a survey here about cheating. And then there's actually the main story here, which is that uh, uh, from Business un Insider, unattractive women more likely to cheat, says a new study. So we're going to go over both those. But first, first, we're going to start off with a um, just pearly things, pearl was on whatever podcast. And uh, they they reached out to me. We never really uh, made an agreement for me to go on the show. It is what it is. Uh, I like what the guys do. And they are bringing on more women with reasonable takes. Now they're bringing on Christian women. They're bringing on married women. And they're saying, hey, let's have a little bit of a conversation about this. I think that's good. Because otherwise, it just sounds like guys yelling at stupid women, which is funny. Uh, but as we all know, for some reason, uh, women get more attention. Of course, now Pearly Things is doing interviews on Daily Wire, and Pearl is doing other interviews. And uh, I love the fact that a woman is now representing the men's space. <laughs> you know, I they they didn't reach out to me. I haven't. They haven't reached out to any other men that I know of, at least over at the Daily Wire. But you know something? At least our message is getting out there. I don't think a woman is the best. A twenty. I don't know, 28, 29 year old, whatever. She's going to be a, a crazy cat lady pretty soon herself. And yet she's representing, because then people are going to point to her and say, hey, you're representing and saying all these things to women, but you don't live by it. And so everything you say is debunked. That's going to be a problem. So I, I still think men should be representing men when it comes to men's opinions on relationships and women and everything else. But Pearl's making the rounds, talking to Candace Owens and talking to uh, Andrew Clavin, I think his name is, and others over at the Daily Wire. So it is what it is. But now men are being represented by women again. Anyway, she goes on the whatever podcast and she talks to this girl and this girl is not, she's, she's heavy set. She's kind of got a little bit of a piggy face. I, now, I think somewhere in the Midwest, there's a guy out there that would have wifed her up and made an honest woman out of her. But uh, I'll, I'll let you listen to this clip, and then we're going to get on to the main article. If body count shouldn't matter. What's your body count? I know it's definitely over, like, 50, probably over 90. Throw under the bus. Come on, guys. About 200, including men and women. Wait, how old are you again? <laughs> I'm 21. 21. <laughs> now, for those of you that can't hear that, she just mumbled. A Pearl says, how old are you? And she says, I'm 21. She mumbles it. She's 21. She says 51st, then she jumps to 90, and, her, and he, you know, of course, Brian here, I think his name's Brian, uh, says to the other girls, okay, throw it under the bus. What is it? And a girl's like 200 by the age of 21. I don't want to be harsh on this gal, but she's not really that attractive. I'm not saying she couldn't find a man. Can't say she wouldn't have gotten wifed up and, and made some... Guy, I mean, if she if she was a good woman, if she was a lot of like not a not a hua, if she was a good gal, I'm sure some guy would have said, yeah, you know, she's my little chunky monkey, and I love her, and she's awesome. Okay, great. But by 21, she's racked up 200 people. When did you start having? 15. 15. So this is all in six years. Mm -hmm. How many would you say you loved? 
five. So she starts at 15, a hundred percent, I would guarantee a single mother home. She starts at 15 in six years. She racks in just six years. That's not good. That's not good. That's I, I don't even do, do the math on that. I mean, I mean, this is the point though. And this is kind of the point of this video. Myself, I've, I have dated women because I like them. I've dated women because they were hot. I've, I've dated women because they were mids, but had slamming bodies. I've dated beautiful women that had mid bodies because they were beautiful. I've, I've made the mistakes. I've tried not to make the mistakes, but when you're a young pup and testosterone is surging through your, your blood and your brain, you make a lot of stupid mistakes. Ironically, I thought at one point when I was, again, very young, it, that now none of the girls I, I dated dressed like this out in public. I mean, she's literally falling out of her top. They were girls that hid everything under sweaters and sweatshirts and, you know, every once in a while a t-shirt. But I could tell she had a nice body, but she had kind of an average face and she was nice and she was interesting. And also I probably wanted to sleep with her or, or them or whatever. So I said, well, it's kind of, no one's going to hit on her because she's an average face, but she's got an incredible body and that works for me. That's my personal taste, right? Unfortunately, a lot of men think like that. So they think, oh man, no one else thinks she's pretty. Well, I think she's good enough to sleep with and that's good enough for me. And the problem is that men think she's not going to be sleeping around because, well, she's not that pretty, so she doesn't get a lot of opportunity. But because women, I think, deep in their souls like attention, they like to be feel pretty, they like to be called pretty and attractive by not only men but other women, when these women need to compete for men, the pretty girls are just pretty. The, the, the less attractive ones usually are more fun in and out of the bedroom because they have to make up for the lack of looks. But because when they find out young men uh, like to like to play with the, the boobsicles and other things, they find out, hey, I kind of have a superpower here. And they use that to their advantage. Well, come, come to find out now, it's just not my opinion or something that I've thought was true, but from a business uh, business from the business standard unattractive women more likely to cheat says a study not a survey a study women who are perceived as unattractive are more likely to cheat on their partners while the opposite is true for men according to a study that identifies uh, predictors for whether your Valentine will be faithful in the long-term relationship interestingly enough I think this is because an, an unattractive woman can use her body to get attention from men if she gets in good shape, I mean, there I've seen plenty of only fools girls and girls on Instagram that are like 10 for 10 bodies and five for 10 faces. And there are men falling all over themselves to compliment these women when it comes to, you know, comments on their social media. But when you look at a guy, if he's, you know, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 in the face and he's mid in the body or the reverse, like he's got a good body, but his face is whew, whew, not so good. Uh, he doesn't get as much attention. So women use will use their body to cheat, They'll, but men, they don't have the same ability to. And so when a guy finds a woman that loves him, he's more likely to stay with her because he knows he probably doesn't have that many opportunities or that the opportunities, the opportunities he gets are not so good. They say the study by researchers from Florida State University in the United, uh, U.S. identified some of the strongest predictors of infidelity, including age, marital satisfaction, sexual satisfaction, attractiveness, and history of short-term relationships. So all you guys out there that still want to date, here's what the science says will give you your best odds. Researchers found younger people and those less satisfied with their relationships were more likely to be unfaithful. I think that's not rocket science those less satisfied with their relationships. But young people, young people don't care as much, obviously. I think they think over time they can do better. Like, oh, I've got plenty of years ahead of me. If I cheat on this person, who cares? I'll find another. Re researchers found, um, I read that part, people 
satisfied with sex in their relationship were more likely to engage in fidelity. Let me read that again. People satisfied with it were more likely to engage in fidelity, perhaps suggesting they felt more positive about sex in general and would seek it out regardless of how they felt about their main relationship. This is crazy to me. So you're doing your woman well and she's satisfied and she loves you and the relationship is good. That does not mean she won't cheat. That it has really very little to do with it. They say here, it, it, they do this regardless of how they feel about their main relationship. Now, I've done... I've done videos on women cheating on their husbands saying, oh, it was so exciting and I'm really glad I did it and it spiced up my life. But they've also said, no, I really love my husband and I would never want to hurt him and I'd never want him to leave me. You kind of say, okay, but why? then why? It's because they're doing it on the down low. They think they can get away with it and they're, they're, you know, they're a little brash about it. They, they think, ah, you know, I'll never get caught. I'm too smart. They say... Another predictor of infidelity was attractiveness. A person's own attractiveness was negatively associated with infidelity among women but not men, meaning less attractive women were more likely to have an affair. A partner's attractiveness was negatively associated with infidelity among men but not women, meaning men were more likely to be unfaithful when their partners were less attractive. So women... Uh, less attractive women were more likely to cheat. Men were more likely to cheat when the women were unattractive. And I find that really interesting. So if a woman is unattractive, she's more likely to cheat, and the guy dating her or married to her is also more likely to cheat. A person's history of sex was a predictor of infidelity too. Men who reported to have more short-term partners prior to marriage were more likely to have an affair, while the opposite was true for women. This one kind of blew me out of the water. So if a dude's hooking up with a lot of women before marriage, he's more likely to have an affair. And if, if women are hooking up a lot before marriage, they're less likely to. Now, the only reason I can think this is true is because women go crazy when they're single and they have all the sexy time and all the fun they want and they have all the hookups and then they get married later in life when they're running out of options. Case in point would be someone like Yana Hocking that I'm always making fun of, the 40-something-year-old woman who's out hooking up and having all the fun. She's not married. It's still technically before marriage. But when she gets married, when she's, I don't know, 53 finally, well, she'll realize I'm, I'm past my best years, uh, I don't look that good. Things are sagging. Things are getting wrinkly. And I'm just glad I found a guy that will love me for the rest of my life while I'm kind of on the downward spiral. That's the only re reason I can think of this. Uh, the research public... Oh, uh, before I, I keep moving on, let me also mention this. Men who reported short-term hookups prior to marriage were more likely to have an affair. Well, those men, as they age... Uh, if they hooked up a lot when they're young men, they're young bucks, their value still increases as they age. Now, I'm not talking about the morality of it. I'm just talking about the opportunities. Women as they age have less opportunity. Most men as they age have more opportunities because now they're more successful. They've got you know, a, a better income. They've got more confidence in themselves where young guys don't have any of that. So if you're a playboy as a man, as a young pup, well, if, if you're given a lot of opportunities as you get older, the odds are you might continue to still have your fun. The research published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology is the first to find evidence of psychological responses that help a person, uh, person in, uh, hmm, help a person avoid infidelity and stay in a long-term relationship. The team followed 233 newly married couples for up to three and a half years and documented intimate details about their relationships, including marital satisfaction, long-term commitment, and whether they had engaged in infidelity and if they were still together. 
Researchers tested two psychological processes that everyone shares in varying degrees, attentional disengagement and evaluative devaluation of potential romantic partners. They get into the details a little bit more and how they tested them and everything. It's a bit dry, uh, but it has to do with looking at pictures and how quick they glance away and measuring eyes and what the eyes are looking at and photos and a bunch of things like that. I, I, I think this is interesting stuff. The only way that this makes sense to me is that women are waiting until they're older to get married, so they have a lot of partners until it's too late and they're running out of options and they get with the good boy, the simp. And men, the men that are getting all the action when they're young, they're still getting the action when they're older. So even after they married, they get married maybe for kids or, or whatever reason to have a family, they say, I'm still desired by a lot of women. I'm going to keep going. That's the only reason, because let's face it, women are out there going absolutely crazy. That's the only kind of thing I can think of. They, from the Huffington Post, which we know is a trash mag, uh, but they do have a survey. Uh, cheating survey finds that people cheat with people less attractive than their spouses. The surprising thing cheaters admit about their affair partners. The age-old assumptions people cheat with someone better looking than their current partner may not actually be true. Uh, according to a new survey by Victorian Milan, a dating site for married people looking to have a, an affair. Here's the rub on that. You're, you're interviewing people that are looking for someone else to have an affair with. So I don't know if that's a good subset of people, but it's certainly the ones, I guess, targeted towards this kind of uh, survey. The website polled over 4,000 of their members and found that uh, most people using the site consider their significant others to be more attractive than their affair partners. Interestingly, male respondents said they consider significant others superior to the affair, affair partner in other ways as well. Only 30% of men cheated with women younger than their current partners, and only a quarter of the men found their mistresses more interesting or more in shape than their partners. So why cheat at all? Men admitted they found their mistress to be more passionate, better listeners, more caring than their significant others. So men, and, and I've said this multiple times, when you're in a, a long-term relationship with a woman, a lot of guys are like, it's not about how she looks. It's not about maybe that uh, things aren't working out so well in the relationship. It's that we're not having as much sex as I want or she disrespects me and she doesn't, she's, she doesn't care about me and she doesn't feel that I'm interesting anymore. That's what men are reporting, right? Again, uh, that mistress is to be more passionate, more excited about the bedroom. Hear that ladies, more excited about the bedroom, not just laying there like a starfish and doing it because you want them to shut up. Better listeners and more caring. Now, the women, on the women's side, over half of the female respondents also found their significant other to be more attractive than their affair partners, but 50% said their lovers were in better shape. Similar to the male respondents, women reported that their affair partners listen better and are more passionate than their men at home. So it sounds like as things fizzle out in the bedroom, both couples go to look for somebody else. But most of the time in the relationships that I've I've talked to with friends and you see, I don't know, Hollywood tropes and things like that. You hear a lot about um, the dead bedroom and where mostly men say, oh, if we had the kids, she didn't want to have sex as much and things kind of fizzled out. Or the same thing is, you know, she does right up until you say, I do, and then she doesn't do it anymore. They say a whopping 89.6% of the women indicated the man they're cheating with makes them feel more appreciated than the significant other. This isn't the first time a dating site for cheaters has looked into the habits and preferences of its users. Ashley Madison, another dating website for people already in relationship, found that uh, cheating men loved drinking Guinness. Oh, wow, I love, I love Guinness, good stout. And in August, the same site revealed what affair anthems cheating spouses prefer. Okay, who cares? So I think this is interesting. Now, remember, the people that they inter interviewed were looking for someone to sleep with. Now, this is going all the way back to 2013. 
So I know this is old data. It's like a decade, decade old, but nothing's really changed. Men that were popular when they were young and got to sleep around and have a lot of partners are still popular when they get older because they still have all the qualities that they have and men kind of age a little more gracefully than women. Women that slept around a lot don't have the opportunities later in life because they're aging. And so that's why the men that slept around a lot continue to do so after marriage and the women that slept around a lot before marriage don't afterwards because they're probably older and have it's time to settle down and and they're kind of coming up on the wall and now they want daddy warbucks a provider to take care of them that's the way it seems to 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 be at least the way these read i think it's it's about time for people to realize that that the days of tying a legal knot between people is kind of over. You know, the Daily Wire and those guys can crap on our points, all we talk about and say, oh, the foundation of society is marriage. It's not marriage. Marriage is not the foundation to society. I, I'll tell you what I think is. Loving one person, staying dedicated to that one person. If you have a family and raise children with that one person, great. It's monogamy. It's a good unit for a family. Marriage doesn't guarantee that. Gar marriage is a, a legal piece of document that lets the woman get away with far too much. Because if you're in a marriage for 10 years and you're successful and she's less successful and she starts acting the fool, you would leave, but she gets half the cash and prizes or alimony or child support, whatever. She can act, act the fool. Because if you get tired of her acting the fool, you can leave and she'll take half the prizes. And then she can act the fool. And if she decides to leave, she also gets half the cash and prizes. It is a win, 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 win for the women and lose in every way for the men. But if you stay now, if you have kids, yes, there's going to be child support and some sort of maintenance. But if you don't, that women that say, I just want to be married because I want the security of being married. Well, there's no security there. That's the point. So what they're really saying is, I want a bailout later on. If a woman says, if you need me to sign a, a prenup before we get married, you don't really love me. That's the, that's the emotional blackmail crap they try to pull on men all the time. My retort would be, if you really loved me, you wouldn't need a silly piece of paper to be with me. Uh, guys, if you like my content, once again, we are over at betterbachelor.locals.com. Uh, I get, you know, between five and 6,000 views on my videos over there. There is a huge community of people uh, that are over there. I'd really appreciate if you came over today, became a supporter. You can, you can go over and be a member for free, see the content. But I'd appreciate eventually if you say, hey, I like what this guy's doing. I like the community and people here. I want to be a part of it for less than a cheeseburger. It's like five bucks a month. So I'd appreciate if you came over and became a supporter today. And we will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.